What's up bros and welcome to another BroGraph tutorial. I'm Dave Koss and today we're going to talk about gears. Not only are we going to talk about gears, but we're going to talk a little bit about Espresso and this might, uh, along with some other tutorials I've done, be a very good intro to Espresso. Now, if you want to create gears, there's a bunch of ways you can go about doing it. You can make them on your own, uh, you can extrude them however you want, you can, uh, you can drive them differently. Um, a lot of people have talked about driving gears using actual physics, but I feel like that that can become a really big pain. It can be more trouble than it's worth to try and get the physics to work right. Not only that, but if you're working on something that's very detailed and you really want everything to work just right, you're going to want to keyframe it. Trouble is, you don't want to have to go in and keyframe every single gear because that takes a really long time and it's a big hassle. So I'm going to teach an easy way to drive gears using Espresso. Now you can see I've got two gears right here. And if I wanted to do this with actual physics, I would have to rig them the center points and I'd have to turn on collider bodies and hard bodies and get the gravity right and all that stuff. And it's a big mess. So what I'm going to teach you how to do is to use Espresso. I'm going to delete these and start from scratch so you can see what I'm doing here. There's, um, there's a shape called cog wheel. And if you create one of those, you can see we've got a wheel here and you look down in your, your options for this and you've got like teeth, you've got the inner radius, you've got the middle radius, you got the outer radius. So we're going to create some that are at, uh, easy intervals to remember for this. We're not going to really have to go into much math on this. Of course, you know, you'll you'll understand once you see how these are set up uh, that the, the math can get not real complicated, but you, you will have to do a little bit of algebra um, if you if you really want to fine tune your gears and do and do gears that are at odd ratios and stuff like that. But we're going to do some easy gears just to learn how to do it. So on this gear right here, I'm going to start with 60 teeth. And my outer radius, I'm going to start with that, is going to be 620. It's because I need a bigger outer radius than the middle and inner radius, which are both, in this case, going to be set at 600. So I've got this giant, <laughs> this giant gear cog right here. And the other thing I'm going to do so that it's easier to see in this tutorial is I'm going to extrude it. Um, your extrude is going to be right here. I like to keep my extrude actually up here in my toolbar because I use it a lot. And I'll go like this and, and it'll make this easier to see. I'm even going to make it a darker color so you can see it for the tutorial. And I'm going to turn off specular. All right. So there we go. There's the cog. And I'm going to go to front view because I would like to see this as straight on as possible. And I'm going to turn on some shading so you can see what I'm doing. All right. So we've got one of these. Now we want it to drive a second one. And we want the second one to be half the size. We're going to basically half everything. So I've, I've copied and pasted this. I'm going to move it over here and go to the cog wheel. I'm going to change these numbers and um, we're going to do, let's see, in this case, let's do half the size. We're going to do uh, 320. I'm going on the outer radius, I'm going 20 over. Um, so it's not really half, but everything else is half. Do 300, 300. I'm going to do 30 teeth. So this is this is half. And if we put these next to each other, I get the teeth in there. This is how we'll start. I'm going to select all and I'm going to hit S so it centers them up real nice. Two cogs. Now, what we want to do is set up Espresso to drive these. So I like to put my Espressos on a null. I'm going to create a null by itself. Go to Tags, add a Cinema 4D tag, and click Espresso. 
and when you double click on that Espresso tag you get a window. Now this window is where you'll kind of lay out the graph of how this is going to work and you're going to learn a little bit of Espresso as well if you haven't done this before uh, while we're doing this. So I've got the first cog wheel here. You know what? Let's name these. I call this cog wheel 60 because it's got 60 teeth and the other one I'm going to go cog wheel 30 because it's got 30 teeth. So 60 is going to be our driver in this case. This is going to drive the other wheel and the way that you put it into Espresso is you just drag that that shape or that element into this window and we've got cog wheel 60, cog wheel 30 you can uh, zoom in and out and, and pan just like you do in the, in the regular viewport uh, when you're in the Espresso editor which is nice and one of my favorite things about Espresso is being able to do, do something called result, put something in here called result on the left side by default um, you don't have that search up. You've got X Manager and you've got X Pool. We're going to go into X Pool and you've got tons and tons of different operators in here and presets and everything and the easiest way to get around is just to search for something because it's a lot faster so this um, magnifying glass is for search and if you type in result this is my favorite thing about Espresso is that you can see the results of what you're doing before you attach it to anything to make sure you're doing it right so this first cog right here this cog wheel 60 we're gonna rotate and make the other one turn. Now we're rotating uh, that's that's B I believe you can see down here that's changing I'm gonna put it back to zero now we're gonna take the output which is when you click on this red tab right here the output of the cog wheel rotation B so you don't go down to coordinates go down to rotation rotation B take a look at that rotation B output what is it well I'm gonna attach it to this result and you can see what the result is the result is zero if I rotate it you can see that the result changes now there are a couple ways that you could drive this and I'm gonna show you the easiest way to drive it where you don't have to do a lot of conversions from radians to degrees and all that kind of stuff this is much simpler I'm going to undo so that we're back at zero the other thing that you probably want to do in most cases is to go to calculate and make sure animation refresh and live refresh is on because I don't think that they're on by default that way you will see results happening coming out of here in real time so our result here as opposed to the one next to it uh, needs to be inverse and it needs to be that um, needs to be double so if I take the search box and I type in math we're gonna add some math to our results you can see you've got math add but there's other operators in there too so if you drag math into here we're gonna do a little bit of multiplication now but I guess before we do this 30 I'm gonna show you what we would do with 60 um, I'm gonna duplicate 60 real quick by I'm um, holding down command and just dragging and that duplicates whatever you're looking at I'm gonna drop another cogwheel 60 in here let's forget about this 30 in fact just delete it for a second for this example we'll come back to that later just to show you what a, a one-to-one -one looks like I'm gonna drag um, the cogwheel 60 into the second cogwheel 60 now the blue here 
on this second cogwheel 60, that's the input, we're going to go to coordinates, rotation, rotation B. So we're going out of this rotation B into this rotation B. And I want you to see what happens if we just attach the two. We've attached one to the other. Go to the original cogwheel 60. Now don't click on the extrude. You're clicking on the cogwheel itself. I want you to rotate it. Now look what happens. That's not right. They're both going the same way. That's not what we want. So undo. We're going to add, do a little math in here. And this result, we're going to detach. We're going to put it out here next to math. We're going to detach this one as well. So these, none of these are attached at all. Rotation B is going to go to input. And we're going to output to the result. Hello. There we go. Now we don't want the result to be the same. We want it to be completely inverse. That means we have to multiply it by negative 1. So if you click on math, you can see right here we've got function, and we're not adding, we're multiplying, and we're multiplying by negative 1. So we'll put negative 1 in that box. Now before we attach it, let's make sure that the result is what we want. To duplicate any node, you actually just hold down Command and drag, and it makes a duplicate, which is really nice. You don't have to go search for it again and put it back in. So I'm going to put another result here. We're going to look at the result from rotation B. And we're going to look at the result after it's multiplied by negative 1. If we start turning this, you can see these are the exact same number. One's just the opposite. So that means that it's doing what we want it to do. So we can go ahead and take this output from this multiply and input it into rotation B of the other cogwheel. And look what happens. They're completely opposite. which is nice. But what if you wanted to use a smaller wheel? Well, here's what you do. I'm going to delete this second cogwheel 60 because we're done with that example and I'm going to delete its node out of here as well. I'm going to turn back on this 30 cog that we made. Now, under the uh, we're going to take the cogwheel 30 and we're going to drag that into our Expresso. We're going to do the same thing where the input is rotation B. And I want you to take the output of this multiply just as we had it before with the bigger cog and rotate your 60. Now watch what happens. They don't line up. And that's because obviously the other one's smaller. They're not going to rotate at the same rate. So what do you do? You multiply it by 2. And then it works. It's that simple. Let me show you again. Under multiply, this multiply uh, node right here, negative 2 rather than negative 1 because it's half the size. The other one is half the size and has half the teeth. And then that works just like that. So what if you want to take it a step further? What if you want another cog? You well, know? let's readjust here. I'm going to take this uh, cogwheel 30 that we have extruded here. And I'm going to copy and paste a new one. And we're going to call this one cogwheel 15. I'm going to move it so that it's right here next to the other one. Now we're going to do half again. Now I'm going to overextend this, this outer radius by 20 again. So I'm going to do 170. Now the other two are going to be 150, which is half of what the other one was. And we're going to have 15 teeth instead of 30 teeth. And there we go. I'm going to take this extrude. I'm going to line this up. Now, here is where you're going to run into a problem. The teeth, where they'll, they will fit together, they're clashing right now. So what do you do about that? Well, go back to your Expresso Editor. We're going to do some double math here. 
first thing we're going to do is get it rotating the way it should be rotating. Now we already have this this multiply right here. So we can hold down command. We can drag it out and it will make another multiply. And we're going to take cogwheel 15 with the 15 teeth and we're going to put it down here into Expresso on the input blue here we're going to do coordinates rotation rotation B and we're going to basically follow the same path from that cogwheel 30 we want to output coordinates rotation rotation B so you can see here we've gone from the 60 we've multiplied it into the 30 and now we're going to multiply it and we're going to go into cogwheel 15 so we're going to do an input into our multiply. Move it down here so we can see it a little better. Stretch it out a little. All right, output of this multiply into rotation B of cogwheel 15. So you can see the path if you just kind of move these results out of the way for now. Cogwheel, multiply, cogwheel, multiply, cogwheel. Okay, so now if I take cogwheel. 60 the original cog I start rotating it you can see what happens because the first one is twice the size of the second one the second one is twice the size of the third one pretty simple now of course if you're getting into like weird size gears it's gonna take some math it's gonna take some algebra you finally use that algebra that you learned in high school and the only problem that we're having here is that the teeth don't line up. And there's a really simple way to fix that. And that's by just merely adding a little bit of addition. We're just going to copy our math. Again, I held command and I just dragged the, the existing math and made a new node. So instead of going from this multiply into the next cog, we're going to get rid of that. We're going to output into another math node. And it's not going to be multiply this time. We're going to do add. We're going to set it to zero to start because we don't know what the offset's going to be yet. We're going to add just a slight offset by doing this addition. We're going to output from the add into rotation B. Now nothing happened because we haven't really set it up yet. See, these, are, these, these teeth are still touching, and we want to just barely get it off. So if I click on this addition math node that I created, I can just put in, let's say, 1. Okay? Works for me. I'm going to click on this, uh, this gear, move it this way a little bit, this cog, whatever it is. I would like it to be rotated just a little bit more, so I'm going to try 1.1. And you can even see that that was too much, so it's like 1.05. But it's just offsetting it a little bit. And uh, that simple addition right there just gave us the offset we need so that they line up. Now, you just turn that one cog. And there you go. If you want to look at all these results, you can. Uh, you can just... Uh, copy these results. If you hold down command and drag result, you get another one. And any of these, you can output results just to see what's going on. You can see what these results look like. Not that you really need all of these, because it's working. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's pretty good, I guess. So, Espresso isn't that scary. It looks kind of scary at times. I mean, look at that. If you saw this little flow chart here um, about 20 minutes ago, you'd probably be like, what in the world is that? But it's really not that bad. So now that that's all working, I'm going to close this. And at frame 0, I'll set a keyframe. And at frame 90, I'll rotate these out a little bit and set another keyframe. And just hit play. Now obviously uh, spline probably isn't the best interpolation for this. It's probably in most cases going to be linear because you don't want it to be easing and all of that stuff. So there we go. 
they're driving each other and it's that simple now if you want to fancy up your gears you can change your teeth size and all of that you know if you want to really get those uh, teeth really 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 close to each other you can adjust the width of them and all of that um, and they've got extrudes on them so if you want to make them look pretty you can come up into into your perspective I'm going to click on all three extrudes here and I'm going to change the movement to 50 just so we have some thick looking gears I'm going to put some sort of a I don't know light gray on this so we can see it better the black just isn't working there we go let's see now you can see the extrusions so that's fun and other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to select them all. I'm going to put fillet caps on them so they look cool. Uh, the radius is way too big. They're going to start looking like they're clashing there. I'll do two centimeters here. So now we have some some cool looking cogs with bevels. You know, if you put a nice specular light on top of that, you'll get some nice shine coming off of those bevels. And uh, hopefully that's a good start for you there uh, in working with gears and working in Espresso if it's your first time with that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you like what you see and you, you want to subscribe, you can go to Brograph.com and see all the tutorials. You can go to Facebook and look up Brograph and like us on there and you'll get all the new tutorials when they come out. We also have a subreddit, uh, Brograph, I believe. And um, we have a new section on our website now, which is the monthly newsletter. If you want to get updates about all the tutorials we did that month, um, new things coming out, fun projects that we're working on, just go to brograph.com and uh, go click on uh, newsletter, I believe, and sign up for it. And we'll, every month we'll send you a little uh, summary of what we've been up to. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you got something out of this. And until next time, have a good one. Later, bros.